um, interesting. Do you have one? One word. Unique. Do you have a word? Fine. Okay. What this was all about is um, we're going to learn about abstract painting today. And what I want you to think about, and I'm purposefully just shooting at this because um, I don't have clearance to have any of you on YouTube. So the only person that's going to be on YouTube is me um, because um, I have clearance for that. So that's why instead of showing your faces when you're giving your answers, I had it on this. Um, what I want you to think about today is color mark making and be open to abstract painting. This is what I want, to think, I want you to think about. Why is it that when a little person, like a three-year-old or a four-year-old or a two-year-old draws something, it's like, wow, you know, we're excited about like the mark making or we, you know, it makes us feel something. But then as an older person, like a high schooler or an adult, it's like we look at what people truly make as art or mark making and then we like judge it and it tends to be quite often in more of a negative way unless this person is really gifted or unless it's a realist painting of an object. Does that make sense? So something I want you to think about. So Carl, can you videotape this for the swimmers and the people that are out today? And we're gonna keep it up at the screen. Okay, so if everyone, if you wouldn't mind turning yourself to the screen, we're going to talk about abstract painting. We're going to turn down the lights, so we're all going to be in the dark. And what I want you to really think about today is abstract painting as um as mark making and it use of color. So Carl, maybe you could just like stand, like be right there a little bit. That'd be great because I have to access this. So who's familiar with Salvador Dali and the melting clock? And who's familiar with Picasso and Cubism? Okay, so when these paintings were being created, um, the next movement that happened after this um, cubism, surrealism, is abstract impressionism where people started showing an impression of a person or a thing. And then other artists started pushing it even further in the 40s. And it all started in New York City. And that's when we started the abstract expressionism. So I'm going to give you a little history on abstract expressionism. It's basically the organization of marks and color on a paper. So when you create an abstract painting, you aren't going to have a plan in advance. When we created the assignment with the bottle and the shell, you kind of like knew, OK, I'm going to have a picture plane. I'm going to have a tabletop that I have to have um, a shell and a bottle. And it should look like a three-dimensional object on a page. This is different. This is more about showing each other an appreciation for the mark making at the level that you are in your life right now. It's not about pushing yourself to create something that is outside of you. It's about looking on the inside. So just a little history. This is an artist that all of you know, or most of you anyway, Vincent Van Gogh, in a medium that everybody in here has used, pen and ink. If you take out the boats, guess what? This becomes, it doesn't have to be water. These marks are representing water, but this isn't necessarily water, right? Like it's not blue, but there's something here, there's a little bit of depth. And the way that depth is created is with mark making and arrangement of these marks. So 
Here, the negative space between the marks are wider, and here they get closer and closer up top. So these marks, when they were applied, got closer, and that showed depth. So the way that we, one way that we can evaluate abstract painting is, <coughs> if, is there a focal point? Is there depth? Depth is an element of design. So this is showing us that, oh, we can evaluate abstract painting. That's one way, based on depth. Does it have depth? That's an element of design. Here, this, there's recognizable imagery in here, so this is an abstract painting or drawing, but these are an organization of lines. Pattern. Pattern and repetition. It's a principle of design. So if there's patterning or repetition, it creates balance. I have it here. I have it here. I have stippling here, a little here, here. That's creating balance. Balance is an element of design. That's a way that we can evaluate abstract art. Okay? Oh, back to the mark making. For abstract painting, what is really, really great about it is you will be evaluated based on your performance. So it's not going to be on the final product. You could satisfy all of the requirements in a day, or you could really spend two weeks satisfying the requirements. How carefully are you painting? Are you um, making your true mark? You're not going to use a ruler. It's not about making something that's perfect. It's about painting from within. So this woman, um, I'm, I'm going to be showing a lot of artist paintings and drawings that aren't necessarily my personal favorites, but I'm going to describe to you the artwork so then you can have more of an understanding for it. So this is Agnes Martin, and um, she is in her 80s, if not older than that at this point. I saw her work at the RISD Museum, and it isn't read well in a slide, but from you know maybe 50 feet away, this is what you would see. It's impossible to really see her work in a slide. Um, it's pencil and color pencil, or um, or pen lines on a paper. And what's interesting about it is when she was your age, her line making, there was a little wobble to it. How many of you can draw a straight line? A perfectly straight line? I can, but I couldn't in high school. So what's interesting about her work, when she was your age, all of her lines were wobbly and were crooked, like a little crooked, you know? And then when she was my age, they were perfectly straight. You know, perfectly straight. Perfectly straight. And her most current work, I saw at the gallery, all of those lines were wobbly. Have you ever gotten a card from an older relative, maybe like a great grandparent? What does their handwriting look like? Doesn't it, does it change a little bit? It gets like a wobble to it. So this is about your mark making. It won't be like, oh, you aren't capable of painting in the lines, so that's going to hurt your grade. It won't be about that. It'll be about making your true mark and developing your mark at the stage that you are. So to go back again, here's one more. So ask yourself this question. If you took out the house and you didn't really know that these were plants, would you still consider it a quality work of art? Maybe not. For some of us, maybe you need that knowing exactly what it is. Raise your hand and don't show the raise of the hands. Raise your hand if you would like this, if it didn't have a house in it, and if it didn't have, if you couldn't tell that this, these were plants. One, two, three. Okay. 
There was about four hands. Okay. What do these look like? You can say it out loud. Lights. Lights. Right. Looks like light bulbs. Lightning bugs. But it doesn't mean that they necessarily are. So, you know, we can paint from our, we're painting from ourselves. So we're painting from our influences. This makes me think about, you know, maybe theater. But does it have a focal point? We were talking about focal point um, can, is a way that we can, or depth is a way that we can um, evaluate abstract art. Where's the focal point? Yep. It's at the top. It's at the top, yeah. How about here? This is like a strange te test from the eye doctor, right? Where is it here? Can you see it? It's in the middle. Yeah, it's in the middle. How about here? There is none. Yeah, in the middle, the yellow one. No, kind of maybe like it's the top right. Yeah, right. Maybe bottom left. What color? It's too abstract. Guess what? You're all right. There's um, multiple focal points, and a focal point truly is where your eye goes. But I can tell you how the focal points here were created. Wherever the um, biggest contrast in the painting is, is where you'll have a focal point. So in the upper right hand corner, the strongest contrast is black and white. So for most of us, this is probably where the focal area is. However, yellow is a really bright color too, so some people said here. Here, there's a little yellow against black. Most people say here. Most people say here, and then some people say here. So Jackson Pollock. Um, Jackson Pollock, so who's heard of Jackson Pollock before? Cool. So Jackson Pollock's paintings, um, he's not, Jackson Pollock is not alive anymore, but his paintings were an organization of marks. That's what we're going to be doing in here. Organizing mark making on paper. It looks like a bunch of paper thrown at a canvas. Do you think there was thought involved? Who says yes? Who says no? Guess what? Yes, people are right. Why? Because for every mark that Jackson Pollock made, and you can say it if you want, you can say it. There was a certain amount of paint loaded on the, on the brush. So that's part of it. You can kind of like think about how much paint is on the brush. If you have a paint that's soaking, a brush that's soaking wet and leaves a big blob of paint, the mark's going to be different than if it's just little tiny dots of paint. Or if you use a paintbrush and flick the paint at the canvas, the marks are going to be different. So if you look here, there's actual focal area here. There's less paint on the outside, more white on the inside, and your eye is drawn towards the center. Not everybody's taste, but there's actually a thought process that goes into that mark making. Here is um, Jackson Pollock's wife, her work. There's no focal point, but there's patterning. I'd like to see more focal in this area, and I um, some place in the painting. And I also like to talk about women artists sometimes <laughs> because during this time period in the 40s, um, women weren't allowed to get any instruction in school. They were self-taught. I have a friend who is a New York City painter, and she is 97 or 98 now, and she um, has told, when I was getting to know her, she told me stories about when she went to the Chicago Art Institute and um, women were allowed to pay tuition and sit in the back of the room and watch. They weren't allowed to receive any instruction. Hard to believe, right? Um, not that long ago, the 40s, but they weren't allowed to receive instruction, so they were all self-taught. So um, this, this particular friend of mine um, that I actually, I did a huge, um, 
textile mural project with her um, in Chicago. She learned by copying photographs of animals. That's how she learned. So, um, she, you know, women like taught themselves. And if you think back in history, Frida Kahlo is really the only famous artist. And a lot of that is because of the movie. So, um, you know, that's how we found out about her. Um, can't really think about any women in history prior to um, the Philadelphia um, um, PAPA, the Academy of Fine Arts, and um, Georgie O'Keeffe and all them are like the first famous uh, women artists. So, something to think about. Now, the next few painters I'm going to show you. Some of them are my taste, some of them aren't. But I want to show you because they are like world famous abstract artists. Mark Rothko, these are called color field paintings, meaning they're blocks of color on a page. Um, there's depth to color, but it's hard to show on a slide. But I'm going to show some of them anyway. Adolf Gottlieb. And Franz Klein. This is one of my favorites because um, you know how I said that we're going to be painting like from the inside out? Um, he lived a miserable life. And it kind of like is obvious in the paintings because um, the paintings are like quickly done, like angry paintings. So, um, and they've got a lot of emotion in them. Um, it's another of his. Here's Robert Motherwell. And this is Paul Clay. Paul Clay's paintings are liked, and I have a couple books in the back that we'll look at later, are liked by um, more high school artists than some of the previous paintings because a lot of them are bright and fun and um, have a little bit of a positive influence. Um, who can tell me where the focal point is in this painting? Yeah, well. I'm thinking like, go right to the middle and then like two inches to the left. Yeah, bingo. Yeah. Here's also a focal area, but here. Contrast, so light against dark, that does it. There's patterning. There's mark making. I don't see any straight lines. You don't have to have straight lines. Here's another Agnes Martin. Joan Snyder. Um, today, the most famous abstract artist is Joan Snyder. So we could look at this and, um, I don't know, what do you see? Does it bring anything to mind in particular? I think um, blood and like bugs fighting or something. It gives me kind of like, what's that? That's what I, I, know, I actually thought it was like blood and there's like a blood, like, uh, like tiny like bubbles just like floating. Yeah. Like, 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 is it bouncing on blood? Yeah. Reminds me of Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. Um, <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of. <laughs> Here's another. And then, so what I want you to think about, and the end, this is the last slide, is would you rather have this room in your house if it were white or with a paint? What do you think? Who would say they would rather have it white? Three people, four, five, be honest, six, seven, seven, eight, nine. Is I think the I room empty? You. So nine people. So nine people would rather have it white, and that means how many people are here today? Raise your hand if you'd rather have it with the paint. Is the room empty? Or can room you put furniture empty. in it? Mm -hmm. 
just as it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So truly, the eleven, twelve people that would rather have it are current abstract painting fans. But I want to tell you something. From personal experience, I, when I was your age, did not like abstract painting. But sometimes once you do something, you like it because you've had the experience of it. And I hope that happens with you. When you actually do it yourself, it's almost like playing <laughs> sports. It's more fun watching sports when you've played it. Have you ever noticed that? Like, before you play a sport, it's not as much fun watching because you don't have the feeling behind it. So hopefully, once we start learning more about color and you know creating marks on paper and being expressive without judgment or criticism such as your line isn't perfect, as long as you're making your line from your point of view at your stage in your life, then you'll be doing well. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. And that's it. Right, bye.